Hey guys, it's Di from Be Mommy with Style, and today we're gonna talk a little bit about our most recent trip to Walt Disney World. You guys know whenever we get back, we generally do like a trip recap, and I typically do a review about some of our favorite things that we did at the trip. We usually do a haul, and this time things were a little different. So vlogs are running after we return from Walt Disney World and on a Disney cruise, and the world basically turned upside down. Uh, as far as the United States goes, um, while those vlogs are running, to the point where at the end of the vlogs, we basically were facing uh, being shut down where I lived and Disney parks were already starting to announce that they were gonna be closed. So it was a very different thing that we returned to this time, but what I did wanna do today was do our trip recap before I got too far out and didn't remember some of what I wanted to say and also say that you know we were there the third week of february and i'm so so glad first of all that we went to walt disney world we were there for the disney creator celebration which was amazing it was amazing they really just were over the top accommodating thought of all the details and it was a really amazing experience so first of all thank you to disney for hosting us and it was an amazing time well, we went to the Disney Creator Celebration, which was part on land at Walt Disney World, part on sea on the Disney Dream. Had a fantastic time, of course, on the Disney Dream as well. Um, at that time, things were starting to kind of stir as far as cruises, but we just took extra precautions. I took extra wipes with us, make sure I had a thermometer, I had extra medicine, and we just made sure to do thorough hand washing, and we went ahead and went on the cruise. Um, and then I'm so, so glad when we got back from the cruise and the event officially ended, we actually opted to stay at Walt Disney World an extra day. We spent an extra night, an extra day. We went to Caribbean Beach Resort and had an extra day on property. And I'm so glad now that we did. We, we left Walt Disney World on February 25th, 2020, not knowing that two and a half weeks later, all Disney parks across the world would be closed. To say it was shocking, just for everyone obviously going through that time period, but just how rapidly things changed during that time period would definitely be an understatement. I mean, literally as I had Disney vlogs running, you know, the world was basically shutting down location by location to the point where eventually Disney announced that they would be closing all of the parks um, and then the resorts afterwards and then all Disney parks would be closed after March 15th. So basically about two and a half weeks after we were there. We had no idea when we were there that we would be one of the last weeks of people to be at Walt Disney World. Um, and obviously I'm emotional about it. I was very emotional as it was getting announced and I think for Disney lovers across the world, just the whole unprecedentedness of the closures really kind of hit you with a huge shock. It was extremely shocking and completely warranted. I believe I understood why they had to, but when Disney announced that they were closing the theme parks, that's when things got very, very real for me. On March 15th, Disney announced that it would be closing its theme parks worldwide. First, the theme parks shut down and then the resorts closed. And this was the first time that anything like this had ever happened on such a large scale. They have closed for significant events one day at a time before, but never for an indefinite extended closure. And so when they closed, it was definitely a moment of realization for me how bad this was going to get. And it definitely made it super real. Um, and it definitely made me realize because the place that I work is very involved with the public, how big of an impact it was going to have for my own work. We were one of the last weeks of people to be at Walt Disney World, and when we were there, we had absolutely no clue that we were going to be one of the last weeks of people to visit. So our final day at Walt Disney World was February 25th. We ended up going to Topolino's Terrace and trying that character meal at Riviera Resort. Absolutely loved it, would definitely do it again when we can, um, but then they had two full weeks of opening after we left and then they closed down. So about two and a half weeks after we were there was how quickly things changed. 
So the vlogs are running. I think you can tell that we had an amazing time. All the details were amazing. And I'm very, very glad that we had the experience because I don't know when the parks are going to be open first and foremost. And I don't know when they will ever be able to do another experience like that. Because when they reopen, they're going to be very much focused on surviving. Uh, as pretty much every single business in the world is going to be focused on surviving. Um, so I feel very fortunate to have experienced it. It was incredible. And also have that time at a place that's very special to me. Not knowing it was going to be closed two and a half weeks later. I don't talk about it a lot, but you know, growing up, I had kind of a, a lot of turmoil and I didn't really have like a stable, like, you know, nuclear family or one stable house that I was always going to. And so growing up, it really did become Walt Disney World became home for me. And I know it's cheesy and everyone says it's home, but Walt Disney World is the one place I have left from my childhood that I can still go to, that it's still there. My childhood home no longer exists as far as being in our family. My childhood uh, grade school was torn down. I mean, it, there's really nothing left from my childhood other than like my childhood church is still there um, and Disney World and that's literally it. Um, so it became, as I got older, very sentimental for me and I'm sure it is for a lot of people and so Disney World closing was, um, I don't know, it was like having a piece of your history kind of closing, even though you know it's going to be temporary. It definitely, it definitely hit very hard. Um, so knowing now what I know, um, I'm very, very glad that we were there. I wish I would have got more treats when I was there. I talked about it in other videos that I was just so focused on kind of getting through certain aspects and making sure everyone was taken care of and getting this picture, getting that picture, that I forgot to do certain things that I always do, like get a whole bunch of Rice Krispie treats and bring them home with me. And now I really, really regret not doing those things because I don't know the next time that we'll be back. I don't know the next time, you know, that I'll have the opportunity to get those things. But in the grand scheme of things, I know that's a very low on the priority poll. Yeah, but um, going back to recapping the trip itself, um, you know, it was a very great time to be there. The weather was nice for the majority of the time. The day that we got on to the cruise, um, the weather was really, really nice, 70s and 80s, and then all of a sudden the weather dipped. It got pretty cold, like on that Friday. So we were all bundled up in sweatshirts, going to the movie theater, and then getting on the ship that day. But otherwise, other than that day, the weather was really nice. It was very, a fairly chilly when we were at Castaway Key. Um, like the water was cool, but it was fine just walking around in a swimsuit. So we just kind of dipped our toes in the water. We didn't do a lot of swimming. We didn't do any snorkeling this time. Um, I think we'll save any future snorkeling if we go back during the summer months just because the water is so temperate at that time of year. For Disney World, it was really fantastic because we had a number of fast passes that we could use. So we really got to ride a lot of our favorites. We rode Flight of Passage. We rode Soarin'. We rode Seven Doors Mine Train is one the kids really like to ride. Um, Barnstormer is one they really like to ride. So we really made the most of those fast passes, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Um, I'm trying to think, I think they maybe went on test track. I don't think that I went on test track this time. Um, that was another thing that was interesting looking at the schedule is that a lot of times when we go on these trips where there's an itinerary that I'm following, they have a lot of time off on their own where I'm busy doing my thing and you know Dan is off with the kids doing stuff. And so this time it was pretty much compacted down to one or like one and a half days. So it was really nice because we had a lot of family time. A lot of the events were family oriented and we really, really appreciated that. And I think you guys could see that in the videos where we were together a lot more than in some of the other videos. Like from one of the previous years where I went, I was literally like walking past them on the ship, like, you know, panning down to a lower floor going, hey, what's going on? Um, but you know, overall, it was really, really good, jam-packed with fun trip, but really, really good. Um, I'm glad I got a character meal in there. The only character meal that we did was the Topolino's Terrace on that last day, but I'm really so glad now that we extended that extra day. We had a little bit of time to go into the parks one last evening, and then the next morning, we, we had like four hours in the morning, and we went to Topolino's Terrace, 
and had our breakfast. Then we ran over to Epcot real quick, like basically walked inside the gates just to get the ambiance. And then we had to basically turn around and get on the Skyliner and head out. I was going to get a macaron in France, which was the whole reason we went over there. But they had a huge long line and I was like, I don't want to make us late for our flight because we had so many problems with the flights on the way down. I was like, it is not going to be me that makes us late. So we ended up just going ahead and heading back to the resorts. So we had plenty of time. Caribbean Beach Resort, we really, really loved. And I would absolutely stay there again. So we stayed there very early on before Riviera was in existence. And I think I said this in another video, but Caribbean Beach Resort now feels very, very different with the Skyliner there, with the Riviera in the kind of eye view of everything. It feels very convenient and comfortable. Both of those resorts are. Riviera was absolutely gorgeous. And I basically have, I've told people when they've asked me about it, I've said it felt like being at home. Um, it was basically like being at home at Walt Disney World. It's very, very comfortable. I think we would definitely stay there again. If we had to rank my top favorite or our family's top favorite resorts, I still think the Animal Kingdom Lodge comes in very, very high at the top. Still one of our absolute favorites because we really love just the ambiance there, but also being able to open up that balcony and look out and see the animals. We just absolutely love that. So that's still the top for us. Um, that being said, we really like the moderates. The moderates work well for us because of the sleeping arrangements. A lot of times they have the little extra bed, which the kids love, those little pull down beds. And we would absolutely stay at Caribbean Beach Resort. I did not request it, but if I stayed there again, I would request Jamaica 41 because it was right there next to the Skyliner entrance and exit. And it was so, so convenient if you're going to Epcot Hollywood Studios or Riviera to get to your dining reservation there, which was the big reason why I chose Caribbean Beach because I knew it'd be easy to get back and forth between the two, either walking or for us, we were right next to the Skyliner Depot getting on the Skyliner. Um, so I was going to make a whole separate video before kind of the world went crazy, but a um, few thoughts on the Skyliner. So I went into it kind of reserved. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. Sometimes I'm not great with enclosed spaces. Sometimes I'm not great with being up high. I love roller coasters. I have no problem being on something fast, something high, something dark if it's a roller coaster. Um, if it's something outside of like that's not controlled, um, then I tend to start being more hesitant about it. That being said, getting on the Skyliner felt very controlled. I felt like it was kind of almost a ride within, you know, moving around the resort. And I didn't have any of the issues being closed in to the Skyliner and the height didn't bother me as well. So that being said, your mileage may vary depending on how much that stuff kind of may bother you. But, um, you know, it, it was actually very pleasant and a very quick way to get around and I actually was starting to enjoy it. Like I would just go on the Skyliner to just ride it at that point. It was very, very enjoyable. Um, the kids really liked looking out the windows and like trying to point out characters that were on different Skyliners. It kind of became a game as we went along. The one thing I will say is most of the time we rode the Skyliner, we were by ourselves. Almost every single time, I think, except for twice. And one time we were on there, just Bella and I with a family, with a small family, so there wasn't that many people in there. And um, another time we were on there with just one other gentleman. So it wasn't like we were packed in with like two large families or, you know, to full capacity. So it felt very roomy when we were in there and I didn't feel like, you know, our space was being impeded on or anything. So overall for me, the Skyliner was a win and I would definitely use it on upcoming um, trips for sure. So um, the Skyliner was a win for us. We didn't use a minivan this time, but I definitely would use it again if the need arose. We had a lot of event transportation going back and forth, chartered buses to take us to and fro certain inter exit points. So we used that a lot of times. We also used the buses a good amount and we weren't on the monorail at all this time. That's one thing that we weren't on at all. So the trip was really great. I'm so glad that we had the experience. And like I said, we had no clue, absolutely no clue when we were there that literally two and a half weeks later, we would be one of the last groups of people to go. It was, it was fairly busy when we were there, but it was a manageable busy. It wasn't as busy as like going during peak time during Halloween season. Um, you know, like kind of Jersey week time. If you guys go during that time or peak, 
uh, spring break time, which those two times a year we, we go a lot. It wasn't that busy, but it was fairly busy, um, especially towards the beginning of the time we were there. I think we were coming right off of uh, leftover President's Day crowd, and then it got a little less busy as the week went on. But it was a very manageable crowd, pretty pleasant weather-wise, and overall, I mean, I really like going in January and February. It just doesn't always work with our work schedules if we're planning it on our own. That's why we typically pick other times of year. Now, with life being what it is and everything's, you know, kind of upside down, who knows what will end up being a good time of year to go. Um... With that being said, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlogs. Let me know if there's anything that you have questions on. If you're looking forward to planning something in the future for your Walt Disney World trip or your Disney cruise trip. I know I didn't talk a lot about the cruise. Um, those are kind of on hold right now, I think until at least June. So um, I had thought about booking a cruise for possibly even later this year, but I think that's going to be out of the cards. Well, it's definitely going to be out of the cards for us now because I'm not working. But, um, you know, I think that we will probably wait until next year before we are back. Um, and that it, it really depends on how long this goes on. So we're thankful to have had the experience. It was a wonderful experience. I was glad to be able to share the vlogs with you guys. And let me know if you have any questions down below. I'd be happy to answer those. And we'll see you in some more Day in the Life vlogs very soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.